Okay, today we are playing a game on Watchpoint Gibraltar. We are in the Gold SR range and we will be playing Hammond the entire way through. We are also on the console today, so consider yourself forewarned. And we're just going to start the game. So we were looking out the window and saw the bad men are standing in places they shouldn't be standing in. As we can see right here, typically you don't want to be in front of the enemy spawn, but it is what they've decided to do. So we're not exactly the most graceful boy in the world right now, but we are attempting to push the bad men into our team. It didn't really work out too well. We just go for the pile drive and then scamper away. We could have gone for like a shot on these people because we get both the healers with this. So we could at least try and get the Anna uh, while she's up in the air. And, you know, we can just scamper away because we're playing Hammond if they turn to face us at all. So we try to push them in, doesn't quite work out, unfortunately. We just saw Orissa use Fortify, which is good to know, and we would like to try and kill her before Fortify can come back up again. Takes us a little bit of time to actually get in position to do so, and then we sort, sort, of, sort, sort of start giving up on it a little bit before recommitting. It got, it got a little bit scary in there, but Moira came over to heal us, and we had Adaptive Shield as well, so it all works out. And now the enemy team are slowly dying. Uh, Reaper, I did just see come out of that doorway. He's dead now already by the time we've arrived. Um, I'm guessing we didn't notice him originally when he first came out of the door. And we had to like come back over again. Whoop. That was a little weird. All right. Oh, are we going to get him? Nope, nope. Oh, Genji fucked it up and he still got away. A little bit of a temporal spike right there. So we've got minefield built up. We go for the minefield right here. And we got a lot of them. Tried to push Arissa back in, but she died before we could push her back into the mines that we had placed, which is very inconsiderate of her, frankly. It would have been sick if she had gone into the mines. So, we've managed to capture the first checkpoint. We're up here bullying Sigma around a little bit. Oh, he's got his shield up. He's really low, though, so we still, like, we're still trying to get him. Alright, we got him in the end. We did die for it, but we did get him, and that's the important thing. We can't let him get away. So, you know, essentially aim better, like, we didn't kill him as cleanly as we could have done, we missed the pile driver because he went through the other side of the shield, you know, it It, it could have been better overall, but I uh, would have probably killed myself trying to kill him as well, because frankly I would have felt like I've deserved that kill and he's trying to cheat me out of it. So after Moira, Moira is kind of a hard one to kill as Hammond unless you can catch her right after using Fade. Because otherwise she's just going to fade away from you. And if you don't aim good enough, she's just going to drain through you and you'll be very upset about it. We've almost got um, Minefield built up. We are just firing randomly right now, which is not a very good use of company resources. Because we got like an 80 bullet clip here and probably like five of them actually hit something other than a wall. So that's not very good because now we get over here to Moira... And we don't have any bullets left, which makes it very awkward for us to actually kill her. So try and try and uh, be a little bit more conservative with your ammo, which might be weird to say in a game where you've got infinite ammo. Technically not true. You have infinite reloads. Infinite ammo is slightly different to that. But yeah, someone with a longish reload like Hammond, if you get caught having to reload, it's very upsetting, especially if you went for a big play and your gun was not loaded. So we push Sigmund, Sigmund? Hmm. Sigma way into our team, which is the ultimate goal of Hammond. And now we're just going to go through and drop the mines on their team. And we managed to get uh, three people. Uh, Symmetra threw up her shield, presumably just, you know, as a show of solidarity. Like, yeah, we're fucking getting them. And here comes Sigma again. He's like... He should have waited for more of his team to be back, really, before he did that, because he just ended up getting, like, clapped in the face, but they were running out of time rather swiftly, but he could have waited, like, an extra couple of seconds. But it all went very well for us, so now we are going to defend still on Hammond, which is fine. Now, fortunately, our uh, other tank is Reinhardt, which makes it very easy for us to not have to worry about, like, protecting our team that much, because we should be able to assume he will be doing that. There is a question in the email about making space on Hammond, which we will talk about later, uh, being a, it's in the email and all. And there is also a question in there about Mercy, which might be a bit of a dramatic change from having been playing Hammond in the game, but, you know... So half our team's dead, both our healers are dead, we should be leaving. 
because we're about to die. We're going back in. We're gonna. Have, they did. It. Thank goodness that none of them did anything to hit us. So now we're just gonna scamper around, stealing all the health kits, as you do. And they're pushing in. You know, that's unfortunate. That was never going to hit anybody. That was not a good use of Ford of, of uh, pile driver. Un oh mercy, missed the health kit. God damn. Unless like one of them was really bad and just walked out from under the bridge. Like what was that? That was never gonna hit anybody. So we are uh, trying to harass this Arissa right now. Uh, I, it's a little bit just like aim better advice, but Arissa's got a really big head. Like you can go up and like try to get the headshots in instead. Like she's got a pretty big head. She's easy to headshot. Um, also, it's better usually to wait for Fortify to be up before you like make a serious attempt to try and kill Arissa because it's very hard to do it through Fortify. And uh, they're gonna capture that checkpoint. We shouldn't have even like gone to try and defend it. Like it was, it was never going to happen. All that was gonna happen was we risk dying and feeding alt charge to the enemy team. So we're just still scampering around, stealing these health kits. Um, we, uh, it's, we haven't felt uh, super productive during this uh, round so far. Mostly just because we spent a lot of time running around collecting health to actually use to fight. Um, Junkrat's using the tire right now, killed two people, Ooh, bit of a temporal flux again. Uh, we are making Mercy quite sad, which is important. Uh, we missed where we used Minefield in there, but I'm guessing we dropped it on their heads, and, uh, you know, they aren't pushing very well, so we'll assume we got a lot of kills. Now, does this seem, you know, you play an Arissa right here, does this seem like the sort of thing that's going to get you huge dividends to use the bongo right now? You know, just like, just you, and the two supports, one of the supports is Mercy, you know, so Junkrat is making it very difficult for us to actually finish this Mercy. We ended up killing Moira instead of Mercy. Oh god, we're so low, Jesus Christ, that was scary. But we got both the supports. Hooray. Um, Junkrat made it a uh, little bit harder for us, but, you know, we, we, we are making Mercy very sad this game, and that's the ultimate goal of, well, everybody playing this game, really, is to um, make the Mercy players sad, you know? So we've got Minefield built up again. We're doing a pretty good job of, like, generating ult charge. Here we've, like, dreadful, dreadful use of company resources. Um... There's, there's nothing here. We basically just like came around this door corner and just like dropped it down right there, but they're all just leaving, so it's not really um, paid dividends, and we can't... It's not very easy for us to like push them into it from this angle either, though we are trying our best. It didn't work, sadly, so not, not great. Not great use of company resources. Moore is using Coalescence now. Uh, Junkrat's also using Riptire, and... There we go. So we're missing... Oh, he was unhappy about that one. He was unhappy about that tire killing him. It's okay, we've got health kits nearby that we can scamper around and collect. We're going in now. I'd rather wait a little bit longer, just like a little bit, for our teammates to be closer before we do that one. So we go and disengage over here. We could have, like, kept fighting. Like, we've got massive... Um, adaptive shield right now, and our team is regrouping. Like, we can stay and fight for a little bit longer. We got four seconds left on this shield. We can make a little bit more of a go at it before we run away to collect this mini health kit, which didn't really heal us a huge amount. We'd be better off fighting it out over here still while the adaptive shield is on us, and then, as it's running out, disengaging to go over to the other doorway so that we can meet the healers as they're regrouping with us. And we found the Junkrat Trap. It'd be like that sometimes when you play in ham, and sometimes you find the Junkrat trap. <sighs> and then, you know, gotta watch your feet, but simultaneously when you're playing Hammond, you're usually moving quite fast, and uh, stopping can be a bit of trouble for Hammond sometimes, so, you know, sometimes you're gonna get hit by it. Uh, not the most graceful aerial maneuver ever, um, but we didn't find the Junkrat trap, so that's all that really matters. So we 
decide to use the minefield right there. It kind of like hesitated on it for a little for a second before deciding to commit to it. Um, you know, it's it's not the ideal use case because ideally we drop it above them, then pile drive on top of them to keep them CC'd while the mines deploy, rather than just kind of like going in and dropping it on top of them. It tends to be a less impactful engage that way. And with people like, with Sigma in the game now as well, like, it's so easy to clear the minefield that just having them laying around isn't as good unless people are just going to be bad and walk straight into the minefield. Or if you can push them into it, that's, that can also happen sometimes as well. Um, we were trying to push Orissa right now. She actually has Fortify up at this moment in time, so we... Should have waited like half a second before attempting that maneuver to put Arissa into our team. Uh, McCree is going fucking in right now with Reinhardt, so Arissa's dead regardless. Oh, Mercy's down there. Mercy's dead now. Uh, if she didn't like shoot her gun, she might have gotten away with that. People might not have noticed. And then she could have walked out the other door. Um, but, you know, at the same time, she at least just died faster. Oh, sick, we killed him. Nice. So now we've learned they have a May. This is dreadful news for us as Hammond, because May can fuck us up good and proper. Uh, so we want to, uh, <clears throat> be very careful when we engage fights now. And if we're ever doing that thing where you're just, like, spinning around the objective or something like that, uh, we've got to be careful that we don't just run, like, headlong into a wall and therefore get frozen and pinned by May. It would be very unfortunate. Here comes Riptire. Riptire went off next to us. We didn't die, though, so sick. Nice for us. Um, that was very upsetting to me, right there, because I just looked at Adaptive... Sh I just looked at our health bar, and it says 700, and I was like, Hammond doesn't have 700 health. Counting the fucking Adaptive Shield and his max health, because it goes down to 600. That's really upsetting, because I was looking at that like, did they buff Hammond when I wasn't looking? Like, no, no. How, how upsetting. Oh, fuck. Damn, just barely, just barely. How unfortunate. Um, it might be for the best in the end, because we were really low while we were trying to do that. So, May just used her wall, which makes things easier for us. Um, did, uh, did we get stuck? Because we kept, like, rotating a little bit in there. We've almost got... Minefield built up, but like when yeah, we're gonna use it I'm like not keen on using it right now because things are not exactly looking good uh, Our team does start making it back, but by the time they arrive the minefields like already gone I would have rather saved it because at this point I'm just kind of like yeah, this checkpoints probably gone and I'd rather save the ultimate to use during a fight that we have a better chance of winning than that one um, you know, just go in, harass that guy, run away, play in Hammond, as you do. Just go in, fuck with them, know they probably won't be able to stop you, and then scamper away. And then sometimes they do stop you, and that's very upsetting. So here, Moira's just faded. I can tell you this Moira's gonna go behind us right now. <laughs> or She's going in aggressively with this fade, because nothing bad was happening to her. And we, like, don't react to her for a little while. Um, by the time we really start trying to kill her, she's already leaving and Sigma's here, so... Could have been a little bit more ready to, uh, react to that one. Because she had to be coming in, using Fade from that position. Why would she be running away? Okay. No one stopped him. You know, Reinhardt, you didn't just want to, like, hit this tire twice, maybe, you know? You know, maybe use Fire Strike or something, no? You were, uh... Rather hold your shield up and watch him deploy the tire right in front of you. That's okay. You know, that's fine. Whatever. You can even pin the guy and that wouldn't interrupt him. You know, that's... No? Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, who are we kidding? We know Reinhardt already used charge by that point, don't we? Come on. What here is he playing, right? So, uh, it's time now to just touch the point and hope for the best. We're playing Hammond, so we are very good at getting back to touch the point. Uh, Reinhardt managed to, uh, pin the May, so that's their, like, main source of, um, annoyance disposed of. And hey, look at that! We kept it. We didn't lose or anything. Just knocked the shit out of the green screen, and amazingly, it doesn't look like it had any effect on it at all. Incredible. So now, they have to rush up and start touching the point or risk losing. 
And uh, they aren't going to make it. They didn't They didn't change many fast boys, so they aren't going to make it. So, now, let's go over to yonder email and look at the questions. While well, this uh, play of the game goes... No, oh, ah. We... No, we're not... Don't even get to see it. Don't even... Oh, here we go. Okay, great. Oh, how dynamic. Look at that. Incredible. Yeah. You show them, McCree. Tremendous. Alright, so the first question is... Do I need to have a making space mindset when playing him, Hammond? Typically, I play with the mindset that I am a bowling ball, and my primary goal is to knock the enemy team into unfavorable positions, like in front of shields, or separated from their team, or into the air. I do this on the hope that if I get a real good engage slash grapple, then my teammates can easily follow up and kill whomever I knock. I occasionally dive people if I notice they're alone, but for the most part, I play around my grappling hook, cool down, and try to use it to mess with the bulk of the team. Can I play Hammond with these goals, or do I really need to, or do I need to really think about how I'm creating space as him? And this how how do you do that? So I mean, that's how you make space as Hammond, pretty much, because you know, it, it's much easier to think of somebody as making space when you're thinking of it in terms of like a Reinhardt or an Orissa, right? Because they have made space by holding up a big barrier between your team and the enemy team, right? So it's easier to think of them as making space, like. Winston and Hammond make space in the same way as each other, which is by diving on the enemy team and creating enough of a distraction that that is hopefully giving your team space to do stuff, right? Because Winston's also a main tank, Hammond's a main tank, they do it in the same way as each other where they are just like disrupting the enemy team. And therefore, because they are generating large amounts of aggro, they are making space by doing that. Now, the thing is that people are not very good at playing with Hammond and Winston as a main tank because it's not as easy for people to play with them as a main tank as it is with, like, Reinhardt, Orisa, Sigma, because those are very straightforward tanks to play with, right? You stand behind the big blue thing that blocks the damage, and you feel nice and safe back there. And there's a big man with a hammer next to you that does 75 damage per swing if they come close, so they best think twice. Whereas Hammond, it's hard to quant think of him as making space when he's, like, on the other side of the map to you, right? But... He's got, like, three people attacking him while he's trying to kill people, and he's, like, knocking them around and distracting them. That's also making space. It's just not in the same way as, like, Reinhardt and Narissa do. And you can't think of um, Hammond in those kinds of terms, because he doesn't do that, really. He can, like, peel for people by, like, knocking people around and just, like, trying to kill them. He can, like, body block and stuff, but it's not really what Hammond's good at, you know? Hammond's good at being a disruption, so... The, the things that you have um, stated in the email, those are how you make space as Hammond, because his, he does it by distracting the enemy team and disrupting them, rather than, you know, blocking. Next up, I know Ryan is supposed to countercharge a pin, but as any other tank, mainly placed using Hammond and Diva, am I, am I expected to body block the pin if I don't know who is behind me? No, you are not. Um, the only time that you should body block the pin is if you know or are pretty certain it's going to hit somebody that won't survive it. Um, because you at least probably can survive it. So if, like, you know that Reinhardt's charging at your sleeping mercy or uh, charging through the blizzard or something, you know, at one of your frozen teammates, then I think you have more, you are more obligated to block it them because at least you have enough hit points to survive, they don't. But no, if you don't know if anybody's gonna get hit, you're not, a, you don't have to body block the pin. It's only if you are pretty sure it's going to hit somebody that can't survive. I feel like another tank, fuck it. They can deal with that shit. They've got enough hit points, right? So no, you're not expected to body block it unless you know that someone will die or you're pretty certain that someone will die if you don't. Uh, but if you're gonna die, like, if you don't have enough health to survive the pin either, even then, like, you, you can just say, well, at that point, like, you have to weigh if you're more important than the person, right? But if you, assuming you're, like, full health or close to, and you know 
the other guy won't survive if he gets pinned, then you should, but no, you're not expected to body block just any old charge. Next up, and this is the last question, why is Widowmaker a good damage boost target for Mercy? I understand why Ash is, but for Widow it feels like they're either in the kill feed... It feels like they're either in the kill feed or they're not, regardless of my input, and I'd be better off just damage boosting an Arissa or something to break their shields with less... Uh, with the hope that less shields equals better game for Widow. I mean, that's a perfectly fine reason, line of reasoning to also go down. The reason is that... A fully charged body shot from Widowmaker does 120 damage, plus the 30% damage boost from Mercy means she does 156 damage, which is most of a hero's health and is all of Tracer's health. So it make it just makes it easier for the Widowmaker to kill someone without needing the headshot, basically. Um, like, yeah, Ash, if she gets the headshot while she or damage boosting her, she one-shots the person. So, that's pretty sick, but Widowmaker also just does a lot of damage on her shots. It can make it more likely that a non-charged headshot or non-charged headshot will get a kill. Um, it makes it easier for the Widowmaker to kill a tank because you're damage boosting them and they're pretty easy to headshot, so you're making it more likely that she'll kill a tank, particularly one of the lower hit point tanks like, um, Orisa or, uh, Sigma. So, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where, like, yeah, it, it's mostly if the Widow is ever going to actually, like, hit anybody that it pays off, right? Because there will definitely be times where you are sat damage boosting the Widowmaker and you never hear her hit a single person. In which case, there's no point damage boosting the Widowmaker. You might as well be going and damage boosting somebody else because clearly Widowmaker is giving me very low return on investment right here. But... It, it just makes her more likely to kill people, but that depends on the Widowmaker, so play it by ear, mostly, like, you know, hang with the Widowmaker for a little bit, and if you feel like it's making any kind of difference, great, if you don't feel like it's making any difference, then go and damage boost somebody else, because it's going to vary very heavily depending on the Widowmaker in the game in particular, as to whether or not you damage boosting them is accomplishing anything, so... It just makes it easier for Widowmaker to do stuff. It's no guarantee that she'll actually do stuff, especially since Widow is so execution heavy. Someone like Ash can at least spam a lot more shots in. You can damage boost like the dynamite and stuff, right? Which doesn't actually make the dynamite do more damage, sadly. It just makes the dot tick faster. I know, I know. Very unfortunate. But, um, yeah, it just makes it easier for her, but... You know how Widowmaker players are. So there you go. So thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you felt I answered any of your questions from the email inadequately, please let me know and I will try to expand further. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just post with us. I've started streaming on Twitch Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. EST till midnight EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.